Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm 36 weeks pregnant this week and I'm so excited to share with you everything that's been going on this past week. It's a lot like usual. I don't know how so much stuff happens every week that I have so much to talk about, but it happens every single time. I'm officially in my ninth month of pregnancy and that is so crazy to think about. I feel like this just flew by so fast. And speaking of being in my ninth month of pregnancy and speaking of being 36 weeks, a lot of people say that 37 weeks is considered full term. When I looked this up online, I just wasn't quite sure is 37 weeks still considered full term or are there different ideas of what is really full term? And what I found online is that 37 to 38 weeks is considered early term, 39 to 40 weeks is considered full term, 41 weeks is considered late term, and 42 weeks is considered post term. The reason for this is, I asked my doctor about it today when I was in her office and she said the reason for that is it's a rule that they cannot induce, doctors cannot induce their patients until they're at least 39 weeks unless there's a medical reason for them to do so. But my doctor does consider 37 weeks to be full term and I will be full term according to her on Monday which is insane to think about. She also said that since Skyla is 36 weeks that if she were to come right now there's a good chance that she wouldn't have to spend any time in the NICU and that she would be just fine and that's so exciting to me. While I was there she also talked to me about which entrance of the hospital to use if I go into labor between like 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. and which entrance to use if I have to go in in the middle of the night and she also spoke with me about pain medication. Most of you who've been following my journey know that I am going to get an epidural. My doctor said that epidurals do not cross the placenta. It does not go to her. She will have no effects from the epidural. There's no way of it getting to her. She said side effects for me could be a headache afterwards. Less than 5% of women get a headache afterwards. And that I could potentially have an itching face and chest, which they could give me medicine to take care of. So, I will be getting an epidural. She said that there are two other options for pain medication and one of them is goes through your IV and it's a type of, I think she said it's a type of morphine, but that can cross the placenta and that can go to Skyla. She said that it would make her drowsy. I really do not like morphine and I don't want morphine anywhere near me or Skyla, but that's because of a personal reason. My grandmother actually passed away because she was given too much morphine when she was in the hospital for a routine surgery and she was very young. So I don't like morphine, I don't want morphine anywhere near me, but I feel comfortable with the epidural. She also said that there's one other type of pain block that I can get that is like a local anesthesia. I think she called, I think that's what she said. I think she said it's a local anesthesia into your vagina to block the pain of, I guess, the pain of pushing the baby out, but she said it doesn't do anything for contractions. I don't want that either. I think I'm just going to, she said, I can even get the epidural anywhere from, it doesn't matter how dilated I am. She said there's not gonna be like a cutoff time. So if I want the epidural at one centimeter, I can get it. If I want the epidural at 10 centimeters, I can get it. As long as Skyla's not coming out right that second, I can still get the epidural. And I said, well, if I want to get the epidural at one centimeter, is it going to wear off by the time she gets here? And Dr. said, no, it's a constant flow of medication. And you also have a button that you can push anytime you want to get more. Because I've heard stories about people saying that the epidural wore off. And I'm confused about that after what my doctor said. So if you had an epidural and it wore off, let me know, like, how did that happen? I'm confused about why she said that it can't wear off. Um, if it has worn off for some people, because I know that people don't make that up. So um, let me know in the comments your experience if you had an epidural. However, like I said, I don't wanna hear your negative comments about epidurals because it's not going to change my opinion and it's not going to change whether or not I get an epidural. Ever since I was 35 weeks pregnant, and I think I started this like right after my last video, which is why I didn't get a chance to talk about it in my last video, but once I turned 35 weeks, I guess 35 weeks in a couple days, because I would have talked about this in my last video had I been doing this sooner, but what I've been doing since I turned 35 weeks is one, I've been starting to drink raspberry leaf tea. 
Raspberry leaf tea does not induce labor. Raspberry leaf tea helps tone your uterus. And I've been drinking it for about a week now. I'm not in labor as you can see. And it doesn't give me contractions, it doesn't give me cramps, it doesn't do anything, but it does prepare while it's said to. I don't know how accurate it is, but a lot of midwives have said, and um, doulas that I've read online have said, I don't have a doula or a midwife, just to put that out there, but I've read online that they say that it can help tone your uterus and it helps the labor process go smoother. So I've tried three different raspberry leaf teas and I'm gonna share which ones they are with you and kind of give you a little review of each so that you know if you're looking for a red raspberry leaf tea so that you kind of know which one you might wanna go with. The first thing that happened is Nick was at Randall's and I said, hey, could you pick me up a red raspberry leaf tea on your way home? And he said that he looked through all the teas and he also looked in the section like I think in Walmart they're in the section with the vitamins and I asked him to look in the vitamin section of Randall's um we do all of our grocery shopping and stuff like that at Randall's I don't ever go to Walmart because the one near me is always like so packed and it's like you're like sardine packed in there and you just can't it's it's like a nightmare it's like a headache trying to go into Walmart here so we don't normally go to Walmart and Nick said that the only tea that he found with any raspberry in it was this tea. Now when I show this to you there are going to be people going, no that's not pure raspberry leaf tea, that's not going to work, that's not going to do anything and I know, okay, I know. This is raspberry zinger, but I want to add that raspberry zinger, the last ingredient of this, which we everyone knows the last ingredient means that it's there's the least amount of that in here, is red raspberry leaf. So there is raspberry leaf in here. If you need something to tie you over until you can place an order online to get your 100% um, organic um, red raspberry leaf tea, this tastes incredible. Whether or not I was pregnant, whether or not I needed to tone my uterus, I will be drinking this now forever because this is the best tasting tea that I've ever had. It has like a, it's called raspberry zinger and it has a tart kick to it and I just love it. Now, in the meantime, since I knew this was not as strong as I needed for it to really affect my uterus, I placed an order for two other types. The first one that came in is this organic raspberry leaf and the second one that came in is by Yogi and it's women's raspberry leaf and it says it supports the female system and this one is also organic. Neither of these taste anywhere near as good as the raspberry zinger but that's because they're 100% pure. So what I've been doing is I add one bag of this plus one bag of one of these and I drink that together so that I get the flavoring from like the raspberry flavored tea and I get the benefits from the raspberry leaf tea and I mix those together and I've been drinking at least two cups of it a day for the past week. And um, since I've never been in labor before, I won't know like if it makes a difference or I won't, I won't know if there's benefits. But I, I just wanted to do it because it can't hurt and I like drinking tea. On Snapchat the other day, I posted a picture of myself sitting on a round workout ball. Or you could call it a birthing ball. I guess depending on what you're using it for, that's what it is that day. And I was rolling my hips around because I was having like menstrual type cramps and um, I think they were Braxton Hicks contractions. And so I had posted a picture on my Snapchat. It w there was not even any motion in this picture and somebody went on and commented and said, you, if, unless you're 37 weeks, you should not be on a birthing ball unless your doctor said otherwise, which really set me off. Um, I spoke to my doctor today and I never even brought up the ball with my doctor. She had no clue that I had even considered sitting on a, one of those balls to roll my hips out, which is all I was doing. But my doctor told me that I could bounce on a birthing ball or a workout ball, just sitting on it with your legs spread, bouncing on it. We're not talking vigorously, like going like insane. That's nuts, okay? I'm not trying to do any weird... I'm not trying to induce labor, it's nothing like that, but she said that it does relieve lower back pain if you sit on it and gently bounce and rock your hips and roll your hips around. And I've been doing that for the past couple days. This one is kind of a wives tale. I don't know if there's anything to technically prove this. Let me know if there is. But it's, people say, and you've probably heard me say this in a previous video, pineapple is thought to soften your cervix. And so, I mean, you'd have to eat a ton of pineapple for it to really do anything, but I have been eating pineapple, like maybe a little cup of it, um, 
a day. Not very much, but I've been incorporating pineapple into my diet because like I said at my 35 week appointment I was nowhere near dilated so I don't, I don't have to worry really about um, going into labor too early, especially not now. But um, I've been drinking, eating a little bit of pineapple a day for the past week so once again, um, if, if pineapple induced labor I would already be in labor because I've been eating pineapples but I hope it's softening out my cervix. Now we can go into symptoms. My lips have been really swollen, not today, but I've noticed a couple days the past, past week my lips have been really swollen. My feet, obviously, if you watch my Snapchat, you'll know that my feet have been completely out of control, swollen, and my ankles. I can't even fit into my fit flops anymore, and I'm so sad about it. I'm normally a seven and a half, and my fit flops are an eight, and those no longer, I can't squeeze my feet in them. It looks like they're just like stuffed in a sausage casing, and it's really bad. So I went online and looked up like some of the best, most comfortable flip-flops that you that are out right now. And I found these Nike Comfort Fit flip-flops and I bought them today at Kohl's. They're on sale for 20 bucks. Once again, if you follow my Snapchat, you already know this, but this is what they look like. This is like really cushy and like memory foam. And the reason I got this color is because it was the only color. These are nines. I'd go all the way up to a nine and it was the only color they had in a nine and I didn't care because these make my life so much easier because this is my last week of working on my feet for my Etsy shop. My partner Meredith is still going to be taking orders for different items, not Yetis. We won't be doing Yetis until I get back from maternity leave, but we will have some things that we're still selling on the Etsy shop. But for me, I'm done after this week, but this week I still have to be on my feet a lot. Just getting shipments ready to go, packaging things up, finishing up, getting everything finished and getting everything out the door, which means I have to be on my feet all day. But this is, this is the last week of that. So I really need these shoes to help me get through this past week and so that I can leave the house because literally, if I didn't go buy these, I don't own one pair of shoes that fit. My ankles are so swollen that I thought I had a bruise on the inside of my ankle. It was so sore and painful and I may have bruised it. I may have twisted my ankle and got a bruise because since there's that hormone going through your body, it's either called relaxin or elastin, I don't know. But whatever that hormone is that's going through your body to loosen everything up, I probably twist my ankle because I had a bruised ankle for a couple of days and it was not fun. I talked about last time how I've been having the chest, heart, and like center of my back pain, how it starts in my heart and it radiates throughout my chest and my upper back. And a lot of people were saying, it's anxiety, it's anxiety, and I, I had never thought about that before. I had an extremely stressful event happen this past week with my ranch, and it created a lot of anxiety, obviously, and a lot of stress and tension. And I noticed that I was getting those same shooting pains in my heart and my chest, radiating through my back, and when I would take a deep breath in, it felt like pins and needles in my heart. So, you guys were right, everyone who said it's anxiety, you were right, and it's crazy because I never would have even thought about that, but now I know that's what it is, and I get have chest pains when I have anxiety. I'm still having like sweat spells where out of nowhere I'll just start sweating and like overheating like I'm having a hot flash. I'm still having the cramps that are like similar to a menstrual cramp, and they're not as bad as they were that one night when I called into the doctor, but I'm still having them. Nick and I went shopping the other day at an outdoor outlet mall, and I felt her drop lower into my pelvis. I, I remember it clear as day. I was walking, and we were walking pretty fast, and not to mention I have to like waddle, like I have to take side steps. Like I do not walk how I used to walk at all. It's funny. Um, it's kind of awkward and embarrassing. But I felt her move lower into my pelvis while I was walking, and it was crazy. I do still have stretch marks. I have now noticed that I get, have stretch marks on the front of my thighs, like kind of below my hips. So obviously once I got these new stretch marks, I went online and did like some more research about stretch marks and you know, why am I, why have I gotten stretch marks even though I've been applying stretch mark oils, lotions, creams, everything every day, twice a day. And what I read is that where the stretch marks happen are so deep under the skin or like deep into the skin that it would be very hard for any type of oil, lotion, cream, whatever you put on your body to really penetrate deep enough to get to it. That's not to say not to try. I definitely still put my creams, oils, and lotions on every morning and night to try and help with it. 
because I know it's helped with the stretch marks that I had before that were white. It does help diminish the appearance of them. That, that is true. But if you get stretch marks, just know that whether or not you're putting the lotion on morning and night, it still can happen because it happens so deep, deep into your skin. I have really bad shoulder pain from sleeping because I put a lot of pressure on my shoulders when I sleep and obviously I'm not used to sleeping on my sides every single night for the past um, eight to nine months I've been sleeping on my side so it's just started to really put a strain on my neck and my shoulders. At my last appointment I was tested for the group B strep bacteria. If you do a search on that you can find all the information that you need to know but my doctor said that 40% of women have it and it's a naturally occurring bacteria. So you can't contract it, it's not contagious, it's just something that 40% of women have. And if you have this bacteria, you can pass it to your baby at birth if you don't have an antibiotic. If you do have an antibiotic, the risk of passing the bacteria to your baby is, she said, one to 2%. A one to 2% chance if you get this antibiotic before labor and you have to get there at a minimum of four hours before you give birth to get the full amount of antibiotics that you need to protect your baby. I tested positive for the group B strep bacteria and I was so distraught at first. I cried my eyes out whenever I read about it online because it's very serious and even my doctor said it's very serious and it's not something to be taken lightly but with the antibiotics there's a really wonderful chance that you will not pass it along to your baby. So all I can really do is stay positive and try and get to the hospital as quickly as I can once I realize that I'm in labor so that I can get those four hours of antibiotics and they will monitor her, after, monitor her afterwards to make sure that she hasn't contracted it. And there's two ways that your baby can contract GBS and the first way is early onset GBS and that's when they start showing symptom within a, symptoms within a couple hours or days after giving birth. And late onset is when it happens, I think they say up to two months after birth. I don't think that it really happens. I think, I think what I read is two to four months after birth would be late onset. There's all sorts of problems that GBS can cause in your baby. There is like, if you research it, there are a million things that... It can interfere with with your baby's health and it's very scary so I have kind of come to terms with it and help myself feel as good as I can about the situation a lot of women just kind of write it off as like it's no big deal and I know that it's only a 2% chance that she could contract it if I go in to get the antibiotics but even any chance is too big of a chance when it comes to your child and I know that people are trying to help when they say oh it's not a big deal 40% of women happen have it it happens all the time you know it's it's not a big deal at all and I know that they mean well and they're trying to say like it's just um, they're trying to make me feel better about it but I do feel better about it but I don't feel a hundred percent good about it I don't think anyone ever could um, if you were GBS positive, please leave your experience in the comments, whether it was good or bad. Um, and if there's any mamas out there that have tested positive for GBS um, and you're scared or, um, you know, you probably feel the same way I do, um, leave me a comment or message me on Snapchat or private message me on, I have an email address that's listed, but um, we can talk about it. So anyway. That is my spiel about GBS. We installed our car seat this past weekend. Well, actually both of our car seats. We installed my car seat, which is the Nuna Pipa that connects to my uh, Stoka, Stoka, I always don't know how to say it, um, travel system. And Nick got one, I don't even remember the name, like the brand of the one that he got. We just got it because it was so cheap. It was like a hundred bucks flat, even with shipping um, for his car and we installed both of them and there's all this drama well kind of because i had asked like what people thought about where is the safest place in the car and i had asked is it the back center seat rear facing obviously everywhere you place your infant's going to be rear facing so i don't know why i add that but 
So would it be the back middle seat or one of the side seats that has latch? Because my car seat base and Nick's car seat base both, both have latch systems on them, but my middle back seat does not is not equipped with latch and his middle back seat is not equipped with latch. But they still say, like the new statistics that just came out a couple weeks ago say that your baby is around 40% more likely to survive a crash if they're in the middle center seat, even if there's no latch, because you can still use the um, lat band to secure the car seat base. You don't necessarily need latch. Um, and from the research that I've done, it said latch was meant to make things easier for like, it was meant to make things easier, but having a latch system does not necessarily mean that it's safer. That's a general consensus. And I think a lot of people think that latch does mean that it's safer. Um, if you can't get a secure fit in your middle back seat, um, I wouldn't do it. I would not put the car seat base in the middle back seat if I didn't feel like it was a, a secure hold, like a tight fit. And the base doesn't move as long as it doesn't move more than two inches, that's considered a secure hold on your car seat base, um, or it's just considered secure, and mine doesn't move more than two inches. Um, mine's extremely, extremely locked in in that middle back seat, and so is Nick's. So some people have told me that the fire station will tell you where the best place is, or that your car manual will tell you where the best place is, or that the hospital will tell you where the best place is. And that's fine, but car manuals were written before this new statistic came out, and you know, I don't know if the hospitals or the fire station, I'm sure that they get updated frequently on what the safest is, but I have mixed feelings about it because if I put her behind my seat, then she'll have latch, but I don't necessarily know if she'll be safer that way, but she'll, she would be on the latch system. Same with Nick's car. So. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, you guys could leave all the comments in the world about it, but that's not going to change how I feel about it. I mean, once I read that statistic, it just completely fogged my mind. Like, that's all I can think past now is that 40% safer being in the middle seat as long as you can get a secure fit. I don't know. Another thing that's happened this week is since Skyla's coming, I don't want Duchess, my cat, in my room at night while we're sleeping because I don't want her to jump into the bassinet and snuggle up next to her face. That worries me. So I don't want Duchess to sleep in the room anymore, basically, but I don't want to start doing that when Skyla gets here because if right when Skyla gets here, I start locking Duchess out of the room, then she's going to associate being locked out of the room with Skyla coming and then she's not going to like Skyla and it's going to be bitter. So I want to, ideally, I really want to start weaning the Duchess and my dog Zell off of sleeping in our room and having them sleep in the living room so that they can get used to that before she gets here. And the reason I want Zell in there as well is because I don't want Duchess to feel like why am I the only one out here alone? Why does the dog get to sleep in the room? So Zell's going to have to go out there for moral support, basically. So I tried to do it last night, and Zell cried at the door, and I couldn't sleep, so I let her in. So I'm going to have to figure something out because they're just... That just especially is not going to be allowed in the room while we're sleeping because it's dangerous to have a cat. They could just jump into the bassinet at any time and snuggle up next to the baby's face. It's dangerous. And... I did order a bassinet net, so basically it's a net that goes over the bassinet and it keeps cats or animals or bugs or anything from getting into the bassinet. But I'm not, I I'm, can guarantee I'm not going to want to remove the net and replace it a hundred times in the middle of the night when I have to feed her and change her. So that's where I'm at with that. I'm really frustrated with Nick because my doctor basically said today that at this point Skyla could really come at any time and that all moms deliver at different times once we get to this point that it's kind of all over the map for when mothers deliver and first time moms are most likely most likely go over their due date and like the average I think first time moms do go over their due date but we're getting so far into the pregnancy now that Nick has told me like, oh, I'm not going to be going out of town anymore. I'm going to be in town until she's born because I don't want to risk not being here. And then today he just told me, oh, I have to go to town for this on this day. And I'm just like, 
I'm frustrated with him because I understand it's work, so I guess I shouldn't be frustrated because it's work, it's his job, it's what he has to do, so I guess I'm a brat for that, but it scares me because my doctor saying like you could really go into labor at any time makes me nervous <laughs> and we only have like a little over three weeks left before my due date so I'll try not to be so stressed out about that. As far as products go I have a lot so I can't show them in this video because it would be way 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 too long if I added all my products because I have so many to show. So I will be showing those in a separate video so stay tuned for that. But I wanted to let you guys know that we ended up getting a mobile for the bassinet. And if you guys have been following our journey, you know that we got a Halo Swivel bassinet. And the Halo Swivel bassinet only has two mobiles that will um, snap onto the side of their bassinet. And neither of them are that cute. Like, there's an owl option or a bird option. I'm like, come on, Halo. Like, you need to make a cuter mobile option but we got the one with the owls so i mean seriously if you google halo bassinet mobile you will see the two options and we got the owl one anyway i'm going to show you guys my bump before i say goodbye this dress i'm wearing is from modern vintage boutique it is so cute i just got it in the mail today and i'm in love don't worry i have shorts on so i can show you the bump without clothes I usually get a spray tan once a week, but this week I'm in overdrive trying to get all my orders out, so I'm getting a little pale again. Thank you guys so much for watching my week 36 video. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you on Friday. Bye.